Okay, let's build a snowman. Good to be here. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> so like I said in the uh, class earlier, this, my friends, is Maya. We just fired it up. Hopefully it will stay connected. So I have to connect to a VPN at the, the U, and then that kills my upload speed uh, for Twitch. So we'll see what happens. Um, but one of the things we wanna talk about first is before we get started with our uh, with our snowman is up here you see we start with polygon modeling and that's what we want to do most games are built with polygons and those are basically uh, little little triangles that make up an object so if you think about the Epcot Center or a tetrahedra polygon or sphere they're made of pieces so what we won't really dig into is if you look over here on cur curved surfaces, you see similar types of shapes here. These are called NURB surfaces, um, <clears throat> which if you want to know the technical definition, they're called non-uniform rational B-splines, which is just real uh, nerdy uh, engineer talk. Um, <clears throat> but those aren't used as much in video games uh, really at all anymore, or uh, film and animation. They are useful uh, for a lot of uh, creative applications, um, but we won't really get into that. Uh, the nice thing about them though is they are very mathematical, very smooth, and actually very cheap um, graphic or graphics wise, but they are not fun to model with at all. They use a different uh, system um, for uh, building out objects. So the way, I, what I, how I always kind of uh, describe that is if you are familiar with Photoshop, you have raster images and then you have vector images. So vector images are mathematical. Um, they're built on tangent, they build the, the arcs and the circles. So no matter how big you blow them up or shrink them down, they always maintain a very precise uh, edge and border and boundaries so that if you wanted to take a vector image and make it very large, you could do a billboard uh, or a very small, and it wouldn't really matter. Whereas raster images, which is like a JPEG or a photograph or a pixel-based image, um, the file size is very important because if you have a small JPEG image, just like you see on a phone or anything else, if you blow it up very large, it loses its definition and its shape. And so that's kind of how I define polygons and uh, NURBS. But like I said, we're pretty much only going to be using um, polygons because that's what is used in in industry. Very rarely have I ever seen NURBS used in, actually I've never seen NURBS used in video games and really never in animation anymore either. Um, I use them as tools to model. You can convert them back to polygons. Um, but then those are special cases as well. So we're not gonna worry about that. So we're gonna use polygons. So if you notice up here in the polygon section up here, we have these uh, little shapes up here. They'll call, they're called pr primitives. <clears throat> and if you've ever taken a drawing class as well, you're always using cylinders, cubes, or circles um, to draw with. That's because you can create basically anything with a primitive. Um, so they're great structures to start a model out with. Uh, so to do our snowman today, we're not going to dive too deep. Um, I'm going to go through a little more description. If you hold down the Alt button and use your light left uh, mouse button, you can rotate around your, your scene here. If you uh, hold down the right button and Alt on your mouse, you can zoom in and out. You can also use your middle mouse to zoom in and out. So those are the basic controls there kind of make it really easy to, to navigate around. So that all makes sense to everybody. So if I go too fast, I apologize. Um, the uh, You definitely have two videos to go with. Um, needless to say, so Alt and left button kind of rotates around the scene. And, and if you get frustrated, that's perfectly okay. If you want to punch the monitor, I understand. We'll, we'll, we'll keep building off of that anger. We'll let that anger consume you until you're a master uh, modeler. Okay, so we're gonna start with a, a cylinder, or sorry, a sphere, because uh, that's the basic shape of a snowman. So we're gonna click on this sphere right here, and you can see I have it auto-creating in the center here. So if you look at this, each one of these little squares is a polygon, and in its basis form, it, it creates two triangles. 
So that is a polysphere. Uh, we're not going to really worry about the resolution for this assignment. We'll talk about that more later. But we're going to leave this like this. The tools that I want to show you guys right now are how to move, scale, and rotate uh, this object. So if you notice, you have uh, these little arrows that pop up and they highlight if you hover over them. And those are arrows to move it in X, Y, and Z space, right? So if I grab onto the green arrow, I can move that sphere up and down. If I grab onto the red one, I can move it back and forward, same with the blue. So that's how we move an object in 3D space. Uh, this is called the manipulator. You're able to manipulate that object with that. So that's the move. And if you want to know the hotkey for that, it's W. I always have to remember this. Over here on the sidebar, you can see those uh, manipulators. See here, this one with the little uh, cube being rotated, that's the rotate tool. If you want to use a hotkey, that's E. We'll toggle to the rotate, and you can see the manipulators change into uh, circles with the same kind of color coding. But if I grab the, the blue one, I can rotate that uh, cube side to side, and with the red one, the other way. Uh, just like in Photoshop, Control Z will undo anything you do, okay? So, I want to give this snowman a little bit of weight, like it's kind of squashed just a little bit. So to do that, I want to use the scale, um, the scale tool, which if I hit R, switches that to the scale. And like I said, there's quite a few ways to access every tool in Maya. We're just going to cover a few of them so we don't get overwhelmed. Uh, but you can see over here on the left, You've got the scale uh, highlighted right here where my mouse is hovering over it. So you've got move, rotate, and scale. And the hotkeys are W, E, R. And it kind of makes it hap easy to toggle through those really quick. But I'm going to squish this ball just down slightly just to show that you can do that. Um, so you can see I can squish the, make it squish either a lot or a little bit. Um, that's just an extra little thing to do to this guy. So we've squished it down a little bit. Okay, so we have the bottom piece of our snowman. We're cruising right now, right? So now we want to duplicate this. And I'm trying to remember how to do it in the scene. So if I hold down Control D, it will actually duplicate the object. Um, or go to Modify, let's see, where is it? That's the problem. Edit, where's duplicate at? Oh no. Uh, there we go. Uh, under edit, you can just uh, scroll down to duplicate. Boom. Oh, and I didn't have the object selected. So select your object, just click on it. Edit, duplicate. We can create another version. And I'm just going to slide this up higher because this is going to be its belly. And you can see I don't want it to be the same size. It looks kind of weird. So I'm going to go to the scale tool. And if I click the, the middle cube on the scale tool, it will uniformly uh, shrink this down. So we're just gonna grab that middle one, shrink it down. We'll just eyeball it to where it looks good. And then we'll just squish that ball down into our snowman. Boom, we're building a snowman. So you can see we got the, the next section of it. So I'm gonna click on that one again. I'm gonna hit Control D, or conversely, I could go to Edit Duplicate to create another ball. It's a lot easier than going up here to the pyramids and continuing to recreate it. And then I'm gonna scale it down. This is gonna be the head. Boom, so there's our snowman's head. So we're cruising, right? So the, the three snowballs created the snowman. And if you notice over here on this side, every time I create one of these, it creates a new object in this. It's called the outliner. So if we look at the outliner, it says P-sphere, and that stands for polysphere. And every time I duplicate it, it just increments the number. So I have P-sphere one, P-sphere two, and P-Sphere 3. And that, that's okay, but it's not very descriptive. So I'm going to change the name of that. Um, so each, any of these, you can double click and change the name. Uh, so we'll call this, uh, I'm just going to make up some names, Snowman Base. Oh no, we'll call it Snowman Body 1. Oh no, 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 I changed my mind again. Snowman, this is the head. Snowman head, there we go. And then this one will be the, 
snowman mid. So the idea is snowman middle, uh, that you name them in a way that if any, anyone had to look through your file, they would know exactly what these were because it starts to get pretty uh, big. So we'll just call this snowman head. There we go. Oh no, that was the bottom. Okay. Bottom. Boom. So we have the snowman head, middle, and bottom. So if you notice, these are all separate. So one of the things I wanted to show was how to, to parent these on. So say I wanted to move this snowman um, around, and we'll look into this a little bit more in a minute, um, but I can parent these all into one object. So if I take the head, you can see it right here, and I drag it, middle mouse drag it in the outliner on top of the middle, boom, it drops it onto that, it parents it to it. Then I'm gonna take that middle, middle mouse drag it onto the bottom, and now if I select that bottom, they're all connected. So I can actually grab the whole thing and move it around. And even now, if I wanted to scale it, make it larger and smaller, I can do it all together because they're all parented uh, with each other. And if I click the plus, little plus marker here on the snowman bottom, you can see the whole thing opens up into a hierarchy. So that's just a little bit of added something something that we'll add there, we'll show off. Okay, so we have our snowman here. What should we build next? What does our snowman need? Any suggestions? Did anybody say eyes? Oh, yes! You did, you said eyes, perfect. Eyes and a nose, I love it. So eyes, so we're just gonna keep it simple. We're just gonna use the head as an eyeball. So let's just hit Control D and you can see it turns into Snowman Head 1. That's okay. We'll just change that name to Snowman Eye. Oops, if I can spell eye correctly. I'm like reaching under my microphone. Okay, so here's the eye, right? Um, but it looks like we need to resize it. So I'm gonna scale the whole thing down. And then uh, because it's squished, I'm gonna rotate it 90 degrees. And you can see over here you have uh, the uh, channel editor here, the channel box, or sorry, the attribute editor where you can see how much they're rotated. So rotating on Z, I can actually middle mouse uh, over that and change it. But I want this to rotate at 90 degrees, so I'm just gonna type in 90. And this will be my eyeball, my first eyeball. I'm gonna save one of those because one of them is gonna be a button too. So here's the eyeball of my snowman. Seems kind of large. Let's shrink it down. And we'll just shove it into his <laughs> shove it into his face like that. Yeah, there we go. And put the other one on the other side. There, all right. He's looking pretty good. This one's gonna be a button eventually. So I'm gonna rename it button. I think we need him for the mouths too. Uh, Jen says a no, so we're gonna save this button piece over here. We'll put that in a minute. Now we wanna give this uh, character a nose. What shape do you think we should use for the nose? Any recommendations? It's <clears throat> a little bit of a lag. A cone, yes, perfect, thank you, Jen. So we're gonna grab the cone, we're gonna click on that, creates it in the center. Look at that, it could be a hat. Do, do, do. Snowman hat. Okay, so we're gonna turn this into a nose for this guy. Do that 90 degrees as well. It's a negative 90 to you. We're gonna shrink this down. So that's looking pretty good. Looking pretty good. I think I want it to be longer though. So we can use the, uh, the um, scale manipulator and we'll just select the green one to make it a longer nose and then we'll move it out. Perfect, look at that. Fellow's got a nose. It's got the eyes and the nose. Um, I think I'm gonna build a mouth for him now. So I'll just hit Control D to duplicate one of those eyes. So these will be like those pebbles that they make the mouth out of.
move one to the side. I'm just hitting Control D to move these, and then I'm just using the manipulator to, to move them into place. And so one of the things you'll notice here, since I duplicated these both and I need to move them both in, if I hold down Shift, I can grab two objects at the same time and move them both at the same time. Kind of makes it easy, right? So now I'm going to grab another one. I'll just eyeball these. Move it up into position. Oh, we're building the most amazing snowman here. Okay. All right. All right. Now he's smiling. Look at that guy. He's all, hey. I'm going to move, slide these ones down a little bit. Okay. So it's a start. It's a start. They're a funny little snowman. Okay, so let's put his buttons on then. We'll call this a button. Shrink that down. But you can see even with 3D modeling, what I'm trying to just show here is with this model is we're just using the very basic tools to build this out. So we're using rotate, scale, and uh, um, rotate, scale, and move. The move, rotate, and scale tools. And then we are duplicating objects to basically build this full snowman. Okay, any requests now? What does this guy need? If he wants to be a legit snowman. This P cone from earlier, I'm gonna rename this to nose. And then I'm gonna drag it, dra ugh, drag it onto his head. Middle mouse, drag onto his head, boom. Arms, he does need arms. I agree 100%. So to do arms, I'm gonna choose the cylinder because they're like tubes for the arms. But because I've done this before, before I do the arms, I'm gonna build his hat because I wanna build his arms out of a hat because I'm weird. So I'm gonna build him as top hat. So we're gonna scale this hat down, right? And I'm gonna save one of these cylinders for his arm. Just put it out of the way. Control D duplicates it. So this is gonna be his top hat. Okay, so we've got the, I kinda of wanted a little bit bigger. There we go. So this is gonna be his top hat. So it's gonna have like the cylinder for the top hat and then we wanna build a, a, a brim for it. And we're trying to just do this whole thing with only the uh, scale, rotate, and uh, move tools. So I'm not gonna do any fancy polygon cutting or anything. Um, don't really need to. I'm just gonna duplicate this hat again. I'm gonna drag it up and I'm just gonna shrink it down like that and then scale it larger and then squish it down and I can drag this right down to the bottom of it and now I have a hat for my snowman. So now we'll take these two pieces and we'll parent them together Okay, so we're gonna call this uh, hat top and hat bottom. Okay, and so we'll gra drag the hat top onto the hat bottom, boom. Now I can grab them both. And now we can kind of tip it to the side because it looks better on a snowman. Because what kind of nerd snowman wears their hat straight up, right? All right, we're cruising. Okay, I'm gonna save that because I'm gonna make a pipe out of it. But now we're gonna make the arms for our snowman. All right, so the arms need to be skinnier and longer, so we'll scale it up. We're gonna keep this simple. And we will just drag this into our this is our stick. I'm gonna scale it a little bit longer. We'll just shove it right into our snowman there. Yay! Rotate it a little bit. Okay, look at that. Fella's got an arm. We'll call this arm one. And now, let's duplicate that again. 
you need the, the forward part of the arm. And there is a different way I would do this, but for because we're just trying to limit ourselves to only using move, scale, and rotate, I'm just going to keep it like it is. So here is his arms. We're just going to connect them like that. And then let's give him some fingers. Seems like a good snowman should have fingers. Just rotate, scale, just moving, moving these around, just eyeballing them. And we'll just do one more. Oops. Went to the wrong mode. Oh no, what did I do? Messed it up. Okay, there we go. Oh wow, what did I do? I hit a wrong key, so I just deleted it. Okay, I hit D. Okay, so now, right, we've created the second arm. So I'm gonna parent all these together. Okay, so I'm gonna cheat here. <laughs> I'm gonna cheat here and introduce something else because that seems like a lot of work for me to do that again on the other side, right? So that's one of the beautiful things about, um, one of the beautiful things about working on computers is that they can automate things that would normally take a lot of time or be difficult. And one of those is getting this arm exactly the same on the other side. So the way I'm gonna do it, so I showed you parenting. You can also put all these objects into a container called a group, just like Photoshop groups, and uh, duplicate that entire group. So I'm gonna hit Control G. I have all these arm pieces selected. I'm gonna hit Control G, and that creates a group. So we can even name this arm group, GRP for short. So that's our arm group, all right? So, Pay attention to this. It, you don't have to, you can skip this part entirely, but it's good, to, it's good to keep in mind. Now that I have that arm group created, I can control D and duplicate that entire group. So you can see if I grab the manipulator, it moves that entire arm. Um, but I want it to be mirrored to the other side. So the easy way to do that is actually if I scale this on uh, X, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna scale it on X, negative one. Oh, not X. I meant not X. I'm going to scale it on Z, negative one. And you can see it just uh, scales to the other side of the snowman. So now he's got two arms and they're exactly the same. Isn't that beautiful? So if you... if if that doesn't make sense to you yet, it will make sense later as we're doing the low poly character because we're gonna have to scale one half of the body to the other side. That's okay. Uh, for this project, if you just want to take those pieces and rebuild the arm on the other side and it doesn't match perfectly, that's just fine too. I mean, you could even, um, you could even make it so uh, he's like waving. So I'm gonna grab these ones and plop it onto the, this arm and I'm gonna make him wave. So I parented those arm pieces to the other side. Whoop. And scooted him over there. So now, he, now he's out of sync. So you could have rebuilt the other arms on, the side, on that way. All right, so that's our snowman. Is there anything else you think we should do? What else does a snowman need? Give you a hint. It rhymes with tobacco. To color. We could color it. We're not going to worry about that today, though. We're going to keep it simple. I'm going to give this guy a, a corn pipe, right? Doesn't he have a pipe? 
So we're gonna use the same cube we used for the, uh, the hat. And we're gonna scale it down. I'm gonna hit Control D, duplicate another piece. Rotate that 90 degrees like you do. Boom, so it's a perfect 90 degree angle. And then we're gonna scale this cylinder down. So it's nice and skinny. And we're gonna pop that into his pipe. Boom, he's got a pipe. Yeah, he's ready to smoke. Yeah, it's looking good too. Okay, so this is gonna be a piece under a pipe top. Let's call it pipe one and pipe two. And then we'll take the top of the pipe and we'll just middle mouse drag it onto pipe two. That way I can grab this piece and stick it in his mouth and turn it at an angle. Burp. You have to make sound effects while you do this too. Burp. Check that out. He's smoking a pipe. We could even go crazy and do little puffs of smoke coming out of that pipe if you wanted to be really weird. Never done that before, but you know, maybe, I don't know. I don't know if that works. Maybe that's too fun. Little puffs of smoke coming out of his pipe. I don't like that. I know, I didn't like it either. Okay, so now I want this whole, uh, this whole thing connected to the bottom. So any of these objects like the hat right here, I'm gonna middle mouse drag that onto the snowman bottom. Uh, the arm groups, I'm gonna highlight those in the pipe and I'm gonna drag, middle mouse drag those to the bottom. So when I hit the negative, uh, box here on the snowman bottom you can see it's all just one object and now I can select the whole snowman and now if I wanted to if I go back to the move tool I can hit control D I could duplicate this this gentleman and create an army a vast army of snowman that's the beauty of uh, working in computers Now I have this big parade of snowmen. They're just coming to attack. Okay, so that's it. That's the entire assignment. So uh, the idea is that if you complete this assignment, you understand what a polygon primitive is. So you've got the spheres, cubes, cylinders, cones, the torus, which is like an inner tube, and the plane, which is like a piece of paper. So those are the four the four primitives. You can pretty yeah, sorry. You can pretty much build anything with those. Those are fantastic starting points for anything. You don't have to create an army if you don't want to. If you want like just one is fine. Um, but uh, from there you know how to move, you know how to scale, you know how to rotate. Uh, through this uh, assignment, we've also gone over how to parent objects and how to group objects. These are concepts that we'll continue to, uh, to reuse over and over and over again throughout the course. Um, so um, even if you don't understand them perfectly, just uh, copying what I did in this will, will be just perfect for now. It's good to copy and then emulate. So at this point, I need to add the JPEG image to both Canvas and to, to Discord. So I'm gonna go into my snipping tool. Aaron, thanks for the follow. And I'm gonna click new on my snipping tool right here, boom. And now all I have to do is just kind of get a nice angle in my view, grab a shot of my snowman, boom. And that is what I would save and upload to Discord. In fact, I'm going to do it right now. So I'm gonna save this capture as Snowman, Snowman Army, and I'll even name it Olson so you guys know who I am. We'll hit save on that, we'll close it. And now in Discord, let's look for my Discord. So we have this welcome to Game Asset Summer. So in Discord, I should have given you guys the role of uh, um, Game Asset Summer so that you have access to this. You're the only ones that can see this channel right here. 
If you can't see it, message me so I can give you the credentials so that you can post in here. So you're gonna post that image that we just created in Canvas and in Discord. So in here I can just hit plus and I go to my desktop, select my snowman army, open and type in, I don't know, screenshot of snowman army, we'll name it something, and hit upload, boom, and then my image posts to Discord. So this Discord is gonna be very handy as we go through this course. If you have questions or wanna show screenshots of maybe an issue you're having or need advice on anything you're having trouble with, it's gonna be super handy, as well as posting your assignments so we can do critique and feedback uh, during class. I'm gonna look at the general channel. I think we had some more people hop in. Student classes summer. All right, my friends, that is class for tonight. Um, unless anyone has any questions, um, this assignment isn't due until tomorrow, till tomorrow uh, right before class. And then when you get to class, we'll be doing the speed model. Uh, the assignment will be posted. It'll be open at, uh, 1 p.m. your time uh, so that you can start on that.